live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions. This is the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and build great relationships. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined by Jade Warshaw. The phone number is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. Jade's going to be answering your money questions. I'll join in on that. And I'm here to answer any question related to work. Are you in a job uh, that you want to get out of, but you're afraid to uh, because you're in debt or you're in the baby steps in a toxic environment, trying to figure out what to do? Do I go back to school? Anything work related that allows you to make more money? uh, I will take those questions on and Jade jumps in onto those. So uh, we always enjoy being together. And and I can I tease that we have a little fun thing coming up later in the program. Let's go, Ken. Tell them just just enough, just, just enough, enough to keep them around. We are going to talk about the true difference between store brands and generic brands with a taste test. There it is, folks. Uh, you don't want to miss that. It's, it hits you right where you're at, your budget yeah. on groceries. So let's get it started again. The phone number is 888-825-5225. We're going to stay right here in our backyard, Nashville, Tennessee, where Andrew is awaiting. Andrew, how can we help? Hey, Ken. Hey, Jade. It's a pleasure to speak to y'all today. You too. Um, so it was a very basic question, uh, but it's kind of a loaded question. So do we owe our kids, um, do we owe it to our kids to pay for their college? No. What is what is Ramsey's, what is y'all's um, <laughs> viewpoint, you know, for that? Cause I, so I just, it, let me frame the question real quick. Not a long story. Uh, this last Monday, me and my wife paid off our house, which was phenomenal. Wow! Let's not um, pass. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Let's not just roll past that. Way to go, Andrew! That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, we're we're grateful to God for that. Uh, but anyway, so we so you know when you have debt, you it's easy to focus where your money's supposed to go. But when you all of a sudden you don't have debt, it uh, almost feels like you're floating. Yeah. Um, and so I'm, I'm just want to make sure that I get, you know, I got my investments. I'm, I'm trying to get those in line, but I want to make sure I, I, you know, I'm later in life. I'm How old are 47 you? right now, mm-hmm. 47. And so I can't afford to make any mistakes. Um, and sure. so I'm just extremely cautious. To, and how many kids? Uh, do I, uh, two. Two. Uh, okay. I mean, I jumped in right away and said, no, I want to point it out in case he missed it. Yeah, I look, I agree with that. I just want to roll it back just a little bit and kind of explain that for people who are listening, not just you, um, Andrew. So obviously there is the baby step five, right? Comes right after baby step four, which you're, you're putting away 15%. And then simultaneously, you're putting away 15%. While you do that, you have the ability to fund a 529 or whatever, you know, kids college account and at the same time, you have the ability to put extra on your mortgage. So four, five, and six, you do simultaneously. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you notice, when it comes to the baby steps, baby step five is almost one of the ones we talk the least about. It has the least um, amount of uh, guidance around it. You know, everything else is a very specific amount. It's a very specific thing. And with baby step five, we don't ever say, and when you do your kid's college, you have to do this amount. Right. Because it really is. And Ken can go into this in a minute. It really does depend on this this child. It depends on their Mm -hmm. uh, what profession they're pursuing. And you as a parent, I think that the bigger conversation is, is it a responsibility to pay for college? Is it a responsibility to pay for further knowledge? like whatever that is. And then within that, you can say, okay, what would I like to do? Because as a parent, I think that it is a privilege to be, if you were able to, to fund some bit of their further knowledge, Mm -hmm. whatever that is, whether it's trades, whether it's education, whether it's certificates, college, traditional, whatever that is. I do think as a parent, it is, I, I will not say responsibility, but I will say it's something that we get the privilege to do if we can. And that does not mean 100%. It does not mean 50%. You get to decide that as the parent. Yeah. I I think the way you worded it, if I, and correct me if I'm wrong, the reason I said no immediately is I think you said, do we owe them? And there you go. And so when, if, did did I get that right, Andrew? Yes, sir. I I did say it that way. I, I don't know if I really meant it that way, but you may not because you, you know, the overall social norm is like you, you're a parent. So it, the feeling a lot is that yeah. you, you have to pay for the college. Right. But so I let me tell you why I said know, I, no. Let me tell you why I said no, mm-hmm. because it's just as good for you as it is for someone else. So 
You don't owe them. It's not your responsibility. You are responsible to your kids to provide them safety, to provide them food, uh, you know, to provide them a litany of things that we all, we don't have to go through the list. Sure. Um, but, yeah. you know, I'm thinking of the single mom in a low income area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would never say to you that it's your responsibility to pay for your kid's school because I wouldn't say it to her because mm. that's an unfair yeah. burden to put on her in the first place. You know, people, we've got to be honest here, you know, people are in low income situations for a variety of reasons, many times not of their choosing. But I can't mm -hmm. tell you how many heroes there are in the form of single moms who are in poverty situations and just scraped everything together just to be able to food and clothe their children. Right. I am not about to say to her that she has the added responsibility to pay for higher education. That is absolute sure. burdened, mm -hmm. and it is it, it now it's putting on this th this this unbelievable guilt if I don't provide that. So I know you didn't mean it, oh, but you said oh, and I think that's coming from the feeling that you have. And if you're not in a financial position. To where you can do it, you should not then feel guilty to try to figure a way around it. They can work to pay for their own school. Uh, let me also say this, because Jade set me up, and I just want to point this out. Part of what's going on with this feeling you have is that most American parents, most, believe that their kids should go to college, because that's been the cultural message. Mm -hmm. You're not a good parent, Jade, if you don't send Junior Back, and Susie yeah. yep. to school. So let me just point this out. At some point, we've got to be intellectually honest with ourselves and say, what does my kid actually want to do with their life if I get out of their hair and I don't put all this pressure on them? And we step away mm -hmm. from the cultural pressure. And I would say, if we figure out what they want to do, I think that is your responsibility. I think you have a responsibility to help your kid figure out their direction. Help is the key word, not decide. Yeah. And then I would tell right. you that if college isn't the only way or the best way, otherwise... There's another way that's a whole lot less affordable and mm -hmm. a lot less time consuming. So I would tell you, my friend, uh, you need to do what's right for you and your wife and your financial future. They got more time conceivably than you do. And so I want you to be set free from that burden because that's what it feels like on you. And let me add a two cents on there, Andrew, because what Ken said is absolutely right. You don't owe, you know, you don't owe that like it's my it's my responsibility to pay for their school, but it is your responsibility to set clear expectations absolutely and let them know hey if you're pursuing whatever your form of further knowledge is here's what we will and will not do have those conversations so they know going in hey if you decide to go to trade school here's what we will do here's what we won't do tell them ahead of time so it doesn't get down to the wire and it's like well wait a second i thought you were supposed to you know fund four years at columbia you know don't don't let them get that far down the line and by the way for for andrew hang on the line i'm going to give you uh the student assessment, the get clear assessment, the student version. And for any parent out there, you can help your teenager figure out their future. It's called the get clear student assessment, RamseySolutions.com. We'll be right back. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Visit Blinds.com to get up to 45% off. That's Blinds.com. Rules and restrictions may apply.
Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. I'm joined this hour by my colleague, Jade Warshaw. And, and friend, Ken. Free. I know. I need to... You, you really you don't like the colleague. I mean, you we're so much more. You want everybody to know that we're friends. <laughs> okay, my... <laughs> But you know what, though? When people say my dear friend sometimes, I always go, are we? My good buddy. My acquaintance. We're beyond acquaintance. Oh, no, no. We're actually friends. Yeah, we're but friends. But I'm saying when you see that like in public, public figures yeah. go, my dear friends. Like, my good friend. I'm not, not sure that you're dear friends. Yeah, we're good you buddies. You just want people to know that you know them. Yeah. But in this case, Jade and I are friends, and so we are thrilled to be with you. 888-825-5225 is the phone number to jump in. The Ramsey Show question of the day is brought to you by Neighborly, your hub for home services. Neighborly is the place to find reliable help for your home and trusted locally owned businesses like Glass Doctor, Precision Garage Door Service, and Mr. Handyman. Visit Neighborly.com today to find home experts available to serve you. Yeah, today's question comes from Philip in Kentucky. He says, I'm a student at University of Kentucky studying to earn my Bachelor's of Science in Electrical Engineering. Very cool. My question for you is, as a full-time college student, what are some ways I can earn money to support myself? I doubt I will be able to fit a job into my schedule and scholarships have paid almost everything. I'm not looking for a quick fix, but rather a learning opportunity. I'm very conservative money-wise and only spend money where I need to and I save the rest. If you have any tips or advice, I would greatly appreciate it. Well, you came to the right place, Philip. I love what you said and I'll point out that what you said is why I'm giving you this answer. You're not looking for money. Um, you want a learning opportunity. So yeah. if I were you, I'd be using the proximity principle. That's why I wrote that book. You want to be around people who are doing what you want to do. And so I would be looking for uh, any type of work you can do for somebody in that space of mm -hmm. electrical engineering. So you know what that space is far better than I. But I'd be working for an electrical engineer, even if it's five hours a week, mm -hmm. 10 hours a week. Uh, even if they wouldn't even pay, but you're like, I just want to hang around and yeah. learn from you because money's not the object here. Yeah. Uh, I want you full on proximity principle, which says in order to do what I want to do, I got to be around people that are doing it and in places where it is happening. That's where opportunity knocks on the door. The fact that you're getting an, uh, a major in that, uh, I would absolutely be working as much as I could shadowing mm -hmm. if there's no money, uh, and my friend, you watch opportunities open up for you. So I love the question, Jane. Yeah, very great. mature question. Very, very good. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave it at that. That's good. There it is. Let's go now to the phones. Omaha, Nebraska is where Ellen joins us. Ellen, how can we help? Hi, guys. I'm so excited that I got through. Thank you for taking my call. You bet. What's going on today? I kind of have a twofold question. Um, so one is career and one is what to do um, with the debt I have on my vehicle. Luckily, that's the only debt that I have. Great. Um, and that's $20,000 is what I owe still on my car, but that's with interest. I'm not sure what it is without interest, but I definitely feel like I need to call and find that out, which is something I learned from the show. That's right. Um, what are the payments? <laughs> um, my payment is four fifty five a month. Okay. What's the car worth, you know? Um, it's... It's still worth about what I paid for it, I think, which is 35 Jade? So you're saying that you owe 20000 but if you sold it, you'd get thirty-five. I I think I could if I if I sold it on my own, like without trading it in for something else. Yeah, that's so, the only way you're going to get that value is you sell it yourself, yeah. which is what I'm recommending. I just want to I, – it's rare that we get to where you're making that much money. I just want to make sure those numbers are right. You owe twenty and it's worth thirty five. Yes, I when I and bought not, it, I not put the opposite. Down. <laughs> she put money Correct. down on it. Sweet, yes. Okay, great. Um, well, I want to know about your. In I I got so excited because usually folks are upside down, so it rarely it rarely goes in the direction where you can make fifteen grand. So that's excellent. Um, I want to know more about your income. This is your only car. It's your only vehicle. Uh, what's your income? Yes. Well, when I bought the vehicle at the time, I'm the poster child of why you don't get yourself into debt with a vehicle based on your income. Mm -hmm. um, so at the time when I bought this, I was projected to be making about 75000 per year. And then that full time position that I was in kind of got pulled out from under me. So now I'm just doing my side hustle, which is um, I'm in a partnership with an Airbnb management company, So, mm -hmm. which is great part-time money, like side hustle money, but it is not great. What is it? Money. So, 
Um, I'm making about thirteen to fifteen hundred a month. Okay. okay. And what were you doing before? What was the full time job that got pulled out from underneath of you? It was still within the Airbnbs, but it was um, it was we were kind of running like a mini hotel at the time. So I was making probably six to seven thousand a month. And then wow, that that's a big got out from uh-huh. under us. Yeah, yeah. So you're making you're making six and a half thousand dollars a month, and now you're making on a good month fifteen hundred <laughs> a month. Um, when when yeah. is this going to change? Like when are you going to get back into a full time job? If you had to project today, like Jade, I'm going to be working by this time next month. I'll be working again. Like what's what do you project that to be? That's the other hard thing. I've been looking for about four months is when this happened. Um, I've been looking and I've put in probably 60 to 70 applications, um, but I'm looking for a job that will sustain me and my kids. So I'm a single mom and right now, luckily, I'm able to live with my parents. Okay. I was going to say, how have you been living for these months? Okay. So you're with the parents. So really, you're only, the only thing you've been paying for is the car and I'm guessing food. No other, no, because there's no other debt, right? Yep. And then um, my son is in private school, but he also has scholarships for that. So yeah. that's like, all right. So we, yeah. we got about three minutes left and I want to get to your work question. So on mm-hmm. the car, let's wrap that up. I think I know what Jay's going to tell you. Jay? Yeah. I mean, it's been a long time. You've been working, looking for a job. You can't continue like this. I would sell that car because for you to pocket $15,000 right now would be huge. Massive. Then you can take some of that money, you know, five or 6,000 and buy a car in cash, something that's going to be reliable for you. Maybe it's $8,000. Either way, I want you to come out of this with a decent amount of cash to your name. Um, do you have any other money saved? I did. So I was really working my baby steps and I had $3,000 saved and that has That's gone. been gone now, which I'm grateful that I had it. Yeah. That was what's been sustaining me. So Okay. So yes, selling the car, putting aside a little bit to buy a, a reliable car in cash, putting the rest in the HYA. YSA high yield savings account. Try not to touch it. Okay. And then Ken's going to help you with the career stuff because we can't keep operating like this. At the very least, you've got to get something that's full time, even if it's not the dream job, because you got to get money coming in or else you're going to blow through that money that you just got on the car in two seconds. Yeah. What have you been thinking about? Because I know you've been applying, but but we can't just apply. We've got to be connecting with people who who yeah. know about open jobs that can put a good word in from you. That's the first piece of advice. But uh, in the limited time I've got with you, what are you thinking about? What 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 is that forward thinking? The type of work you want to do? Um, the stuff that I've been looking for is like administrative bookkeeping type of stuff. Um, and I just I've been networking. It's just not. Yeah. <laughs> The doors are closing and closing and that's closing. That's okay. Listen, I know that's discouraging, but that's what you want to do. Something more clerical, something with numbers, administrative work. That's your jam? Mm-hmm. Okay, great. So you can't you can't quit on this. You have to keep talking and connecting. But to Jade's point, uh, she's spot on. Right now, I'm okay with you go getting uh, a 40-hour job that's paying you 20 bucks an hour, even if it's a big box store, because it's going to give you some momentum. It's going to give you more stability. We wipe out the debt. I'd like to see you buy a seven to ten thousand dollar car max, and the rest of that's in savings. I'd stay with mom and dad. I think that's a blessing right now. I'd stay there until you get on your feet. But part of you getting on your feet is just bringing in more steady Mm -hmm. income, 40 hours a week. And then we keep the networking, we keep connecting, and then we eventually step into that job that you're really looking for. So in this, in this zone right now where you're like, I keep getting rejected, um, you keep going, but let's go get something that's just sitting there right now in Omaha, Nebraska, that needs somebody like you who can come in and do a good job. Let's get 40 hours and, and move through the baby steps. But I'd sell that car today. Get it done, buy another car, and you're gonna be fine, single mama. Uh, you're a mama bear and nobody's gonna stop you. So we're rooting for you, so hang in there. Uh, hang on the line. Let's give her uh, the assessment, the Get Clear Career Assessment, along with the book, From Paycheck to Purpose. It's going to walk with you through this process. Thank you so much, Ellen, for the call. This is The Ramsey Show.
Hey, folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre approval and a secured interest rate. Plus, a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. Welcome back, America. You are joining the conversation about your life here on The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, Jade Warshaw. With me as well, the phone number for you is free. It's 888-825-5225, 888-825-5225. Jade will take your money questions. I'll take your work-related questions. They all have a way of working together anyway. And uh, we're here for you. This is a safe place. You're not going to get chewed out. And uh, Well... Yeah, well, you think you might choose somebody out? Look, a little I, bit. I'm feeling froggy. Okay. Let's see. All right, we'll see. I'll speak for myself. <laughs> uh, maybe some tough love, but mostly love, um, because we want to help you win. 888-825-5225. Brandon is now on the line in Atlanta, Georgia. Brandon, how can we help? Hey, uh, how are you guys doing today? We're having a blast. What's going on? All right, so... Uh, took financial peace to my fiance last year. Um, able to work through that over the last year um, with really our only debt being the truck I had purchased last year. Uh, we got that paid off last month and we're getting married next month and that is all being cash flowed. Sweet. So no debt whatsoever. She's had no student loan debt. Um, so we are completely debt free there. Uh, now, moving on to, we're looking to purchase a house next year once the lease on our apartment ends. And we're starting the process of uh, saving up for that down payment. Now, my question would be, do we approach this like it's baby step two, where we pause any uh, investing for retirement and throw it all at a down payment? Or can we do both? That's a good question. Um, when it comes to that, uh, what you're talking about is baby step three and baby step three B in investing. Do you already have three to six months saved? I do. Okay. So baby step three is done. So now it's a question between baby step three B and baby step four, investing the 15%. And when it comes to that, you can do them both at the same time if you want, or if it's going to take you, um, if saving for the down payment was going to take you any longer than like two or three years, I'd be like, no, do not wait, like start investing at the same time. Cause I wouldn't want you to lose that time. Like if it was going to be like a three or four year process, um, in your case, if you did not move to baby step four, how long would it take you to save for the down payment, be ready for earnest money, closing costs, all that stuff. How long would it take? Uh, I anticipate seven, nine months. Okay. Then if I were you and you guys are ready to go after it, I would do baby step 3B, do the home, and then move on to baby step 4 so you can just focus on one thing at a time. Ken? I don't disagree. Any questions to that at all? Uh, no, I don't believe so. I, I just thought about going ahead and funding a Roth um, and then pursuing the down payment. I mean, um, you can. There's nothing wrong. If you're like, hey, I'm so excited mm -hmm. to invest. I can't wait. Then, yeah, do both at the same time. But at the end of the day, it's really up to how quickly you and your fiance want to accomplish mm -hmm. this home purchase. And I always say, Ken, because we, we always talk about the down payment, mm -hmm. you know, and you want to get up to 20 percent if you can, no less than 5 percent. But there is a lot of cost that goes into purchasing a home beyond oh, the down payment. No question. I mean, I didn't, I'm, I'm just being honest. I didn't know the first time Sam and I bought a house, I'm so glad that we had mm -hmm. some extra money laying around because I was like, oh, oh yeah. you you find the house you like, you put the offer in, you ha sometimes you have to put earnest money down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that can be, you know, one to 3%. Sure. And then if there's closing costs that are not baked into your, you know, loan, it's like you have to pay those and it's like, oh, wait a second, another mm -hmm. $10,000, you know, you don't know. So I would, ex I would always advise people, I always say, come in with a stacked deck. That's your down payment D, earnest money E, and closing costs yeah. C. 
Make sure you know that going in what it is yep. so you don't get caught. You know what I'm saying? And, and Brandon, I, I think Jade's absolutely right. And I would throw one other thing on top of that. And that is I'd have some I'd have some. Uh, oh, I'm a homeowner cash set aside because yes. I've, got a, I've got a real story for you, Jade. Let's hear uh, it. The house that we're in now, you got you and Sam were over. Mm-hmm. Uh, that front room of ours, the, the, the library room. Well, you know, we wanted to turn that from a dining room into a, into a library. And we just bought this house. And, uh-huh. and so we did all the things you're talking about. So you get in. Yes. Good inspection. Yes. No problems on the inspection. Which that costs too, mm-hmm. five, 700 bucks. It does. So we get in. And we go, all right, we're going to put some shelves. Nothing extravagant, just some shelves. So what we had to do is we had to pull the chair rail off. Yeah. And in doing so, we we noticed the drywall and it was a little squishy. Mm-mm. Oh, yeah. Long story, extremely short. Who knows how many years there had been, uh, there wasn't proper flashing on the outside <sighs> of the brick wall on the outside. And, and when it had a strong rain yeah. and there was mold in there and everything. So we ended up oh. having to spend thousands and thousands of dollars just by trying to hang a shelf just by a basic let's put some custom bookshelves in there so all that to say we had the cash yes uh and and but it cost way more than we planned that's right and we had to do some real maneuvering uh and we had to delay some of it once we got that we get the mold out and we, yeah. we fixed the, the water so it was no longer an issue uh, so just to point out when you buy that first house you never know what's going to happen. That's and so, right. Brandon, it's not in any way to discourage you, but I would tell you, uh, if you can wait, wait. I'd like every couple to just wait just a little bit longer so you're not cash poor when you actually move in the house. Yeah, because when you say wait, you're saying stack up as much money stack. as you possibly can. Yeah, don't just think yes. down payment to your point. But I'm also going, I want to have, you know how we tell people to pause the baby steps to uh-huh. maybe for the baby coming? Yes. Because you don't know what's going to happen. I'd say the same thing for the house. I, I'd say, let's let's have some cash so you move in this new house if something has to be fixed. I'm not talking about reno the bathroom the way yeah. you wanted it. And you're not so you're saying so make it to where you're not having to dip into your emergency fund yes. simply because you just got like it's not an emergency that you need a U-Haul truck, right? It's not an emergency that you need uh, to get the home inspected. Yeah. It's not an emergency that yeah. you need to, you know, all these I things. I just would have some extra cash for those first three or four months because that's when you discover stuff. And of course, it can happen at any time. Oh, yeah. But I just, most people don't think that. They go, okay, I get the down payment, get this, and now I'm in. Can I tell you, you told a story when we first, our second house that we got, we moved in and we did a reno on the kitchen before we even moved in because the kitchen was crazy and uh got in we were in there like two nights and our bedroom was upstairs we were like upstairs for the night like ready to go to bed right. and light lights off at one point sam's like i need to do like what is that sound and we heard something we didn't know what it was we go downstairs the un- the valve underneath the kitchen sink had like busted water was pouring in oh my god pouring thank god for his ears i mean we would have been asleep i don't oh, even yeah. know how we heard it i wouldn't have heard it it was flooding so oh, quickly man. and i was like oh my god i mean it was enough to where like we had to stop everything oh, we had to call yeah. the air air serve pro you know what i'm talking about to come and make sure everything was dry do you understand if we had gone to sleep and oh, not heard that we would have whole... woken up yeah oh <gasps> Did, did, did he did he go turn the water off outside? Oh, yeah. We yeah. had to turn it off outside. Ooh. By the way, that's one of the most valuable things, new homeowners, that my father-in-law taught me. Find out where your master water shutoff yes. is before you ever get the keys of the new house. Go, oh, where's the- Where uh, is it? Because that that's a lifesaver if you know where that baby is. Yeah, he, he had to go turn Ooh. it off. And let me just say, water and home- are two those are two words you never want going together it, how uh, bad you you still you got a little trauma it, when that you was trauma that story? because i'm like if oh, we had not what if we had already fallen asleep we would have woken up to a pool downstairs it, it, you'd have to replace everything, everything. downstairs everything. Ooh, god is good <laughs> yes <laughs> you've been there done that i'm not going to go to one more story but uh, it is important that when you get into a home that you because so many people want to rush into a home and yeah. you end up being house poor oh it's terrible you can't actually afford to live in the house and that filters into everything ken when you're house poor it filters into how you work and how you show up at work oh because you're realizing in that moment, it's like the only reason that I'm working is to pay this right. bill. Right. And yes. I'm not even there a lot because I'm at work 40, 60 hours a week. It's true. You know, this is a home should be a place of peace. Yeah. 
Um, and if it, your home is a place of stress just because of the finances, I'm telling you that dream turns into a nightmare quickly. So, hey, here's here's what we're saying. Having we, We've been there, done that. Your older cousin's here mm-hmm. talking to you. Don't rush into a house. Be able to afford the house and, and what comes with it is going to be a whole lot better situation. But if you didn't and you're in some trouble, Jade and I are here to help. We can help you get out of it. It's okay. We've all dug out of stupid before. You're not the first. You won't be the last. Don't move. More of your calls coming up. This is The Ramsey Show. Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by 100 if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey, and it will make a difference for your business too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Back to the Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman, joined by my friend Jade Warshaw, and we're here for you. Triple eight eight two five five two two five. Hey, if you're new to the show, and we know a lot of you are, it's so exciting, Jade, when we sit in these meetings and give us updates. Yeah. And then we're getting a lot of calls. I mean, we were on just a couple days ago. Hey, I just started listening two weeks ago. So a lot of brand new listeners and viewers, mm-hmm. and we want to say number one, welcome. Number two, we know there's some lingo around all this money stuff. And so when you start thinking about the process and you maybe you're new and you're picking up on some of these phrases and baby steps and what does that mean? We, the team has done a great job. We've got a get started assessment. It's just a couple of minutes at RamseySolutions.com. It's under the get started button. And with just a couple of questions about your financial situation, uh, we'll be able to get you caught up as to where you are in the journey. And now you feel like, okay, I get it. I see where I am and where I'm headed. So check that out, the Get Started button at RamseySolutions.com. Dalma is up in Orlando, Florida. Dalma, how can we help? Hi. Um, so uh, my husband and I recently moved from Illinois to Florida to help my parents. We pay half of their expenses. They're elderly. Um, in the move, I sold my house. And um, saved about forty five thousand and put in a CD in the event we decide to purchase a, a home. Um, but the only thing I have left to pay for debt is my student loans, and I was wondering if I should just use the money that I have in the CD and some savings that I have um, accumulated since moving here to throw it at the student loan and, and take care of that first mm-hmm. before moving, like even thinking about moving into a new house or buying a new house or, or what. Yeah. How much is the student loan for? It's about uh, 78000 so 78, 77 something, but we'll round it up to 78. Okay. And so you've got the 45000 in a CD. And then I think you mentioned you had some other money saved as well. Yeah, I have about a thousand dollars saved in a flexible savings account, like a high interest okay. savings account. So a thousand dollars there. Anything else? 
Um, no, I do have like a 529 plan that for my daughter's yeah. college. And we won't touch and that. And I do have a, a Roth IRA. Okay. Yeah. And we won't yeah. touch that yeah. either. So we wouldn't touch the college mm-hmm. fund or the retirement. And just, mm-hmm. just for clarity, did I hear you say we moved? Is that you, is, is it you and your husband? Just in my, yeah, my husband and I. Okay. Your husband, husband and, and you. I. Um, okay. Sorry. I'm digging deep on this. I'm digging a little bit deep, Dalma. Um, you said your student loan, and I've heard you say, like, my, I've got this saved. I just want to be clear. Uh, does your husband have any debt, or is it just your yours? Uh, no. Actually, I paid off all of his debt that um, he had. He had. We just we just got married last year. Okay. So, in, so part of the proceeds from the sale of the house, I used to eliminate his debt and okay. also a car loan. And so the the leftover money um, after like the expense of moving, I put in CD because I didn't I want to touch that. I yep. see. Okay. So to answer your first question, yeah, I would I would clear out all debt before buying a house. So I would um, use I would keep the thousand dollars that you have. I'd keep that set aside. But effectively, you're in what we call baby step two, which is when you're paying off all of your debt except your mortgage. And so you keep the $1,000 saved as a starter emergency fund. And then in your case, you would clear out that $45,000, put it towards a student loan debt. And then with your income and your husband's income, I want you both working together to clear the rest of the student loan debt that's going to remain the other 30000 or whatever. Does that make sense? And you're doing that as quickly yeah. as possible. Then you're both working together to save up your down payment somewhere between 5 and 20%. Does that work for you? Yeah, it's it's a bit scary, but yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, Let, yeah and but, let's talk about yeah. that. It, it, it is scary. You've got this 45000 set aside. You know, it was probably a little bit easier when you were putting money towards your husband's portion of the debt because you knew you had this nest egg. You know, 45000 That's you know, that's a little bag to keep to the side. And now the idea of dropping that down to $1,000 feels shaky, right? Mm-hmm. And it should, you know, there's validity there. It should feel like, oh my gosh, like this is crazy. But the hope is that you're going to use that as fuel to move quickly, right? You're quickly paying off this debt. And then the next part of this Dalma is you've got to save up three to six months of expenses because I don't want you to go into home ownership with no savings. That's going to be, I mean, Ken and I were talking about it earlier. That's going to, that's a recipe for disaster. So you do have a little bit of a journey in front of you, but it's a good journey because it's going to set you up on the right footing so that when you purchase this home, you're going to be like, (sighs) deep breath. Yeah. It's going to feel great. So what I hear you, what I hear you saying is to throw all the money that that I have saved in CD and the savings into the student loan, pay that off. Once I, that paid off, then I work on the three to six month expenses. After that, then I work on saving for a down payment. That's that right. right here? Got it. That's right. Just make yeah. sure you keep, just make sure you keep a thousand dollars set aside. Cause I want you to have some, you know, little cushion money in case you have an extra month, uh, you know, an, an emergency. I want you to have a little money there. So keep that thousand that you had saved and then everything up, it, everything else goes to that debt. Got it. You got yeah. it. Okay. You got it. Yes, Dalma. And she's you really going to do it. She, You know, she is. She's going to do it. I we can hear feel some it. people and you go, they're not going to do it. We just told them to do no, it. No, she's Dalma's smart. Dalma's going to do it. She's I like, I it. get it. Give me the game <laughs> well, plan and I'm running. Yeah. Because you always have conflicting information about student loan debt. You're mm-hmm. like, oh, you're never going to pay that off. Why would you ever throw extra money at that? You yeah, know, those... that, that. And um, that's where I was just like, do I do it or not but yeah, i you don't absolutely want do. it anymore it's good, good. good. forever yes <laughs> so, dalma those that's other, it look the folks telling you don't pay yeah. it you know yeah. you'll never be able to get, those are people who have lack of confidence in what they can do yeah, and they're projecting right. that onto the masses i'm like no y'all don't put that evil on me ricky bobby y'all y'all <laughs> keep that over there as <laughs> for me and mine we shake can do this I shake, love it. shake and bake you knew i was going there <laughs> I'm All glad right. you did. Uh, she's on a roll. I think you can help Austin in about two and a half Let's minutes. Go. Let's go. Austin, Jade is standing by. What can we do for you? Hello? Hello. You're, oh, you're live, yeah, Austin. Hey, okay. Yeah. W- what's awesome. up? Uh, first time caller, long time listener. Oh, uh, love it. We, me and my wife, we are in about 65000 in total debt. We got probably 12000 in student loans. Uh, another 10 in credit cards, but we also have two cars, and my car 
and we got about eight thousand. Her car, we got twenty four thousand, but it's only worth twenty one now because she's done so much driving last year for her previous job. Is it a lease? And, and no, we uh, we just thought we have it up through finance. Okay. And uh, so we uh, over the last probably year and a half because we started the baby stuff. Uh, first off uh, January of last year, kind of like a New Year's resolution. And we have paid off probably close to $75,000 in debt. That's but great. We kind of wow. hit, a, we kinda hit one of, a, a log jam. And okay. And so we're trying to figure out the best ways to get that out of there. And, What's the log jam? Uh, I'm going to move you around, uh, move you along a little bit so we can get to the end of the okay. call, but yeah, yeah. what do you think the log jam is? Because you were moving along good. We're we're not finding extra money to pay off extra debt. Did you guys and change your, got, did you change your working situation? Did somebody switch jobs? Yeah, or? My wife, my wife switched jobs. She went from making probably close to 80. Now she's down to 40. Well, there's, and, there's, there's your, your there's log your jam, answer. my yeah. friend. So, we, got, we need more yeah, revenue. Well, so let yeah, me let sorry. me give you so she's a teacher. Yeah. Let me give you the quick yeah. answer okay. because here's what we know. When she was making forty thousand yeah. more, you guys were moving right along. Now that that forty thousand is gone, you're not. So it's a it's an easy it's an easy equation, but it's a hard equation, right? We know where the problem is. Right. We know it's income. So right now, y'all have got to work to get that income back up as close to that 40,000 as possible so you can move right along. And in the meantime, yeah, I'm looking at these cars. If you want to move faster, you could, if it's worth 21, you could take the $3,000 hit, right? Go down to your local credit union and get that loan and then put a few thousand dollars with it and buy a car in cash and you'd be out of the 24,000. Yeah, you can do this. This is about doing whatever it takes to get more money in to get through this season. Thank you so much for the call. All right, that does it for this hour. Don't move, more Ramsey Show coming up. Hey folks, Ken Coleman here. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? To get your daily dose of advice on life and money, Check out all of our shows from the Ramsey Network wherever you listen to podcasts. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, this is The Ramsey Show. It's where we help you win in your life, specifically your money, your work, and your relationships. I'm Ken Coleman. Jade Warshaw joins me. The phone number for you to jump in is 888-825-5225. That's 888-825-5225. It's your show because it's your life, and we're here to help. So let's go. Albany, New York. Well, this is great. If my eyes don't deceive me, this is one of my favorite things. Is it's alliteration? Yes. Uh, it, this is Alba from Albany. I mean, this is like a gift to a broadcaster. <laughs> Say I'm saying it right. Is it Alba or Alba? It's Alba. And you know oh, I got another one for you. Right, I'll change it. It's, it's Alba from Albany. Albany. I'll change it. I can work with that. Right, I got a better one. It's Alba from Albany, who's from Albania, who lives in Albany from Albania. You're from Albania. Yes. Oh, I, right. I, I just want to make sure everybody catches this. We're talking to Alba, who's from Albania, but now lives in Albany. Hey, this is very exciting. This, this is, is a broadcaster's great. dream come true. It's driving James, the producer, nuts. So we'll get into the call. How can we help? Okay. Okay. So um, I've got a home equity loan that we took out and as well as mortgage debt. And um, we're a one-income household with two kids. So my husband makes about... Um, like 60 grand take home okay. at the end of the year. And I was wondering, we have a 401k and I was, and I was wondering, should we take out money out of our 401k, which includes like a 9% interest on whatever we take out to pay off the home equity line of credit? No. Because, no. And no. Then we'll pay it back to ourselves. No. no. No, because you're oh you're trying to solve debt with debt. 
you can't solve a problem while simultaneously creating a problem. And you're taking one loan to try to, you know, it's like that robbing Peter to pay Paul, right? So the only Mm -hmm. way to pay off debt is to pay off debt with real money that wasn't allotted for something else, right? And you're not going into debt to do that. So let's break this down. Let's figure out how we're going to do this. How much is the home equity loan? It's right now 46 grand. Okay, 46K. And the income is $60,000. You got two kids at home. Yes. And this is the only debt or is there other debt? No, we also have our mortgage debt and that's all. Okay, and that's fine. So baby step two, we're paying off all the debt except the mortgage. And so I would lump this into baby step two, But which by the way, though, let me just double check. Your mortgage, how much is it? Like, what's the full amount you owe? 115000 115000 Interesting. So technically, Ken, what we would say is if the HELOC is more than 50% of the home value, then we would lump it in with paying off the home. Mm-hmm. If it's less, then we'd add it to baby step two. Mm-hmm. So in this mm-hmm. case, technically, you could lump it in with paying off your home. Do you home. guys have an emergency fund? Um, not really. Okay, our good. savings yeah. and our checking are very, very low. I think you're right. I think you're right, Jade. I think we put that into the home and let's, let's tackle the uh, baby step three. But here's, here's, here's why I'm very nervous about this because of what you wanted to do earlier lets me know that you're not necessarily done with debt. Yeah. And can we explain that? Did you, let me just ask you this, Alba, do you understand why we don't want you borrowing from your 401k? Um, my husband did mention something about, you know, leaving money in there because of the in stock and stuff like that. Well, and like, you know, no. Jade, explain why it's, later on. I want you to understand this because if you understand this, you won't touch it. You, you will never even think about it again. So number one, yeah, with, I'm a baby in this. I just good. started no, reading the Ramsey great. book. Oh, J- good. Jade's going to set you free. Then I will. Let's talk about it. So with your 401k, uh, uh, Alba, the purpose of it, it's for retirement. And so when you touch that money before 59 and a half, before retirement age, there's penalties on it. That's number one. So if you guys pull out a certain $50,000 to pay this off, you're going to be penalized for that. And I think at this point, it's 10%, something like that. So you're going to have to pay that. Then you're hit with the taxes of it because it's adding to your income. So you would have to pay taxes on that money. Then there's this whole idea of like, if you have a 401k loan, if something were to happen and your husband were to lose his job, he's on the hook for that money, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's part of his 401k. So I believe he's got a calendar year. I think he's got a year to pay that until he's hit with more penalties and fees. So it puts you in such a precarious situation. I would never again. And at the crux of this whole argument is the idea of you're not really solving the problem of debt. You're just shifting it from one very important asset, which would be your home yeah. to another very important asset, which would be your retirement account. And that that uh, line of thinking just doesn't make any sense. What you really want is you if you ask yourself, what do I want here? I don't want to feel the weight of this HELOC anymore. That's really what you're mm-hmm. after in yeah. your heart, right? Is you don't want to feel this debt. It's on your home. So the solution to that really is to pay it off with your own hard-earned money. And that way, when it's gone, it's gone. It's not just shifted over here and shoved in the closet over there, right? I'm curious. How much money do you think you and Hubs can throw at this right now without doing anything different than than what's happening today? How much extra could you put on it right now? Um, Well, not nothing, really. I mean, we've got seven grand in our checking and we don't even have like, we've got 200 on our savings. Okay. Okay. So the way I look at things like this, Alba, is if I were going to pay it off in a year, that would be about $4,000 a month we would have to put towards the home equity line. Okay. If we can't do that, then we say, okay, you just start, well, could we do 2000 a month? And so you begin to be able to picture this. Yeah. You've got to have an end in mind or else it just feels like this, this mountain we can never climb. So we've got to start to put some goals. And we say, okay, yeah. if we paid off in a year, we would have to do this. If we paid it off in two years, we'd have to do this. 
I think that's really important for you guys to look at and go, okay, what is possible if we make some changes in our life? I'd start with that exercise. But uh, Jade, to you, and, and I mean, you're, you understand that you're the expert on this one. If they were to wrap it into the mortgage and tackle it that way after getting through baby step three. Yeah. Because well, either way, to, to, to get that baby step three, if, if you go that route, it's going to take you guys a while. You guys need more, yeah, income need more income and less expenses right now to make more momentum. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. yeah. Ken is right on. You need more income coming in. I want to ask if you're on a budget. We are not. So I've been telling my husband, we got to sit down and do this for real. Get a uh, pen on paper. Yeah. Uh, and let's not do pen on paper. Um, matter of fact, let's let Christian pick up and let's get you guys into every dollar. And not only that, so every dollar is the budgeting app that we created here at Ramsey Solutions. It's the only budgeting app I, I use, Alba. My husband and I used it to pay off over $460,000 of debt. And not only that, but George Camel, one of our personalities is going to be hosting a free webinar September 26th. And I want you to attend that. Okay. We're going to put the information on the screen in the show notes. I want you to go to that. And Christian's going to pick up afterwards. I want him to hook you up. Uh, use my, my promo code. Okay, Christian. So she can get $15 off of every dollar because wow. that's what you need. You have your own promo codes. Come on. Every dollar.com yeah. slash Jade. I and if you want to do some. the web, the webinar, it's every dollar dot com slash budgeting okay yeah take Verify part that. in that george is going to walk you through that webinar again that's every dollar by the way everybody's invited every dollar.com slash budgeting thank you for the call we just talked to alba who's from albania but now lives in albany this is the ramsey show Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAM or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show, where we talk about your life, specifically your money, your work, and relationships. Jade Warshaw is with me. I'm Ken Coleman. And this segment is going to be about your budget and specifically groceries. Oh, the now, biggest budget buster. I mean, we're in this season of it feels like forever inflation. And one of the areas that hits people the most is groceries. That's right. So tell people, first of all, I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, this is what I call sample time on the Ramsey show. Oh, heck yeah. I, I'm just an absolute stooge right here. And, and Jade is going to walk you through and walk me through some sampling. And you're going to prove a point here. I'm going to prove a point. The point is... When, especially when you're in baby step two, you're trying to save money at the supermarket, at the grocery store, you make sacrifices. You know, you want to get Cheerios, but instead you get our value, right? Or great value. And so we've got to make those sacrifices. And here's the thing. We're really going to taste and see if there's really a big difference yeah, oh, yeah. in the way it tastes because we know there's a big difference difference in the price. So Ken. So what? So I want it for our listening audience. What we've got here is a round table on the desk. Yes. And here's what we're about ready to go through. We've got some coffee I can smell. Coffee, two brands, a national two. brand and a much, much cheaper brand. All right. We're gonna, and then we've got some shredded wheat, looks like. Yep. We've got the national brand Kellogg's and then the store brand. All right. And then we've got some basic chips, no flavor. No, nope, basic potato chips. We've got uh -huh. the national brand, which is Lay's. Right. And then now the store I'm going to sample these. Yeah. Uh, but now what's worrying me, James, 
and Jade, if I can be honest, is I see two rolls of toilet paper. I ain't sampling those. <laughs> Oh, well, America's no, we don't, not ready for that. We'll put him through the test, though. We'll put a test on him. So, Ken, let's try these chips because... <laughs> <laughs> that makes me laugh. I like the nice toilet paper. So I can just tell you by the looks. Uh, we'll get to that. We'll so get to that. what are we doing first? So everybody buys potato chips. You put them in the kids' yeah. lunch. You can either spend $4.79 on an 8-ounce bag of Lay's, or you can spend two eighty nine. dollars 89 on the store brand, so so give that it a adds try. Up. So Let's, which what? So I bring both bowls over here. Well, let me get some candy. Oh, I didn't know you were doing it. I, what am I supposed to do? Get right you now? a chip. All right, kid. one chip. Taste it. All right. This is a good one. I had to eat it on the mic. That's what makes it either entertaining or awful. It was awful for a lot of people. Okay, okay. that's your standard chip. That's All right, right there. Taste this one. All right, now hold on. I need to like cleanse my palate. Okay, hold clean, on. Cleanse your palate. Okay, a little sip here. All right, a number sip. two. Now, this is number two. Ooh, that's some good, uh, that's good radio right Did there. Did you hear the crunch? That was a great I'll crunch. I'll tell you this. It's an obvious winner for me. Which one? Number two. Number two is the store brand. And the, you know why I chose it? Taste and crunch. It's $1.90 cheaper. That's almost $2 cheaper. What was this that I had? Lay's. The first one was Lay's, and they were stale as heck, weren't they? What's the other one? Publix? Publix brand? I'm going Publix brand overlays. It's not even Wow, close. wow, wow, wow. And part of a chip, by the way, for a guy. I'm speaking on behalf of all men, so ladies, listen to this. Part of eating chips for guys is the sound. I want to hear it crunch. <laughs> I want to okay, hear it Ken. crunch. All right, next. Since you like the crunch, now we're going with cereal. Oh, all gosh. Right? Standard, okay, cereal. Standard shredded wheat, right? Kellogg's. By the way, true story, I've never had shredded wheat in my life. Oh. Ever. First time right now. And then we've got the store brand. So let's pour some milk in the cereal oh, for the man. people listening. You're actually doing milk? I'm doing milk. I've never had milk in my... I don't put milk in my well, cereal. first of all, that's not milk. For our listening audience, that's oat milk. Well, I have, to be, I have to be able to try it. I want it. some 2%, man. Give me the lactose. All right. Get you a you spoon, know? Ken. A spoon. Oh, and, this and taste great. one of these. Folks, it I get paid to do this. I just want to point this out. Okay. This first time ever. Yeah. I oh. like shredded wheat, but I just eat it dry. You also like oat milk. Here we go. I didn't slurp. Did I? Did I slurp? No, you didn't slurp. You could slurp it on the radio, though. People like that. All right. All right. That's the first one. What's next? Okay. Use your same spoon and try the second one, because I want to try this. All right. All right. How are we doing on time, James? Are we doing good? Our fearless We're leader? good. We're, We're good. We're good. Okay. Hold I'm going to taste this one, too. First of all, no one should ever eat anything with oat milk. Let me just tell you that right now. I don't understand how if people... Life, if you got to be healthy, and this is what life is like... I that's kind of good. I don't want to live it. That's oh. kind of good. I like it. I, I put orange juice in my cereal. Okay, I don't clear put milk winner. In my cereal. Clear winner again. What's the one? First one. That's the store brand. I don't know what's going on. The apparently, store brand one again. Apparently, I am a generic dude. Guys, and That's by what the way, I'm taking away from this. This is a blind taste test. Only I know which yeah. one is the yeah, store I have no brand. Clue. I have no clue. Uh, that'll come as no surprise to anybody. Okay, so Ken, what you're saying is I'm store brand. You, which is a dollar eighty eight cheaper. Again, almost two dollars difference is better tasting. It is. Is it because they're putting more bad stuff in it? Uh, no, not I'm, necessarily. I'm just asking. You're the health queen. I don't think so. You're I one mean, of the cleanest eaters I know. Here's the thing: most of these uh, store brands are made at the same manufacturer as the national brand. It's the same thing. They just slap a different label on it. Well, All if right. it's the same thing, why do I keep picking the cheap brand? I don't know. I, I think mean, they taste. I'm telling you that the cheap chip tasted different. I'm it did. It had the crunch. Now let's try this. This I don't coffee. Know about the other one. Coffee oh. is what we have here. You guys know, of course, it's better to brew it at home than Starbucks. Right. But in this case, is this mine here? Or yeah, here? that's yours. Now I'm going to put a little creamer in my coffee. I'm going to drink it black just because. So I you wanna, can really get the taste. Because I want to judge the. Okay, coffee. okay. Judge. Does that I make sense? Yes, I won't do creamer. So the first one. Here we first go. First one. Down the hatch. Is this going to burn my tongue so I can sue you? Do well, I get to sue Dave if I burn my mouth? Ho oh, ho! I'm kidding. Stop it. It's going to be on social media later. Oh my gosh. Taste it. Okay. All right. Okay. Golly. Ooh, that's nice. You people that drink coffee black and act like you like it, why don't you all just own it? You're lying to the What rest are you of saying? Us. I like black coffee. This might as well have had a shoe bottom in the no. filter. No. Then oh. that means it's not good. No, all black coffee's terrible. No, it's not. See, it's not a manly thing. I'm man enough to go, I want some sugar and cream in my coffee. Can I'm I? I'm a man. I have my choice. All right, number two. That was off. That was dreadful. Okay, this one was this one. I'll put it. 
Oh, gosh. Yeah, number two is even worse than number one. All right. So on that one, here's what we did. The what nas- did I choose? The national brand was Pete's. You guys have heard of Pete's Coffee. Yeah. And then the five ninety nine brand was Cafe Bustillo, which is a Latin brand, which I like. I thought that that one was better because I like a full bodied. But guys. Which one's cheaper? Cafe Bustillo. It's Did I choose the cheaper one? No, you chose the expensive one because you're bougie, Ken. But uh, I chose the less expensive apparently one. Apparently, I'm not. I mean, it's a $7 difference. $6.60. All right. So now we're starting to, in the budget here. We're going to come back to this. So maybe I scrimp on the chips and I pay a little more for the coffee. I mean, we're working our way through this. Or maybe you just put creamer in the coffee. Oh, gosh. All right. Now there's a big Ugh. one. Can toilet paper. Now, see, I don't even have to. Well, I'm not sampling it. So what am I doing? I mean, I I'm just touch looking. It? I'm touching it. It right, looks like t- it's got me... a decent ply to it. Oh, OK. I can. Hold on. I'll wipe my nose. I don't have anything. Yeah, on yeah. My blow nose. your nose. Oh, let me let me just let me just. <laughs> okay. Come on, Ken. OK, we're good, James. Well, Relax. let's think about this. Okay, the Charmin for the same amount. The Charmin right, 779. You, you... OK. Is and this... the Angel Soft. Is this Angel Soft? It's 479. Well, I don't know. You tell me. Don't be reading it. Just look at oh, it. Oh, I didn't read. Hold on. I got to wipe my nose really quick. OK. That is a $3 difference, guys. Oh, there's no question. There's no question. Uh, the, the, the second one is much softer on my nostrils. It's softer, but will the first one get the job done, Ken? That's the question. Well, when it comes to toilet paper, I don't want John Wayne toilet paper. You know what John Wayne toilet paper is? It's <laughs> rough and it's tough and it won't take crap off of anybody. Stop! Hey, watch out. I'm going number two. It's softer. What, what say you? I don't want you to go number two anywhere oh, in the studio, Ken. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I walked right into that one. All right, so which, which I chose uh, toilet paper. You chose Charmin, number. which is $3 more expensive. I'm going to cho- pay three more dollars for my bottom. Look, I'll be honest with you. I am Team Angel Soft. That's what we bought when we were in Baby Step 2. And oh. look, it's a short-term sacrifice for a long-term gain. You, Your bum will be okay. I tell you what I'm doing then. Let's talk real budgeting. All real right? budgeting. What if I, I go generic brand, I save all that money on everything else, but I spend on the soft double ply toilet paper. I say do what you got to do, Ken. Again, right. we're making trade-offs. This is trades. You know, you can say, hey, I'm willing to scrimp on this in order for me to have a little bit extra so to walk, buy that. walk through this. How much money could we save if we go generic brand across the board, all the way up and down the old list? Oh. M- Hundreds? Uh, per month, hundreds. There it is. Easily. Hundreds. We just now, just right here, we saved $10. All right. Tell just people three, how they can learn products. more from you on this oh. and budgeting and everything else. Come on and go to my Instagram. Boom. She's doing Jade it. Jade Warshaw. Over there. That's where it's at. Yep. Ken, this was fun. Hey, we save people some money. Um, I'll be honest with you, though. I wouldn't scrimp on the toilet paper. I'm going premium. Team Angel Soft all mm. day. Give me mm. my $3 back. No, no. Ken, you got bougie nostrils. I do. I do. (laughs) It's been said many times. Hey, good stuff. Don't move. We got more of your calls coming up next. I'm going to eat some chips. Hey, folks, Dr. John Deloney here with some great news. You get to choose. Whatever you do, good or bad moving forward, the choice is yours. And when you're intentional about making good choices over time, they become healthy habits, like choosing to slow down and make time for a daily practice of prayer and meditation. One thing that has helped me with a daily practice of meditation and prayer is Hallow. Hallow is the number one prayer app in the world, and they're giving you three months free to get started. That's three months free to prioritize your mental health and be intentional about finding peace through calming music, prayers, meditation, and more. And Hallow isn't just Catholic. You can tailor the content towards your faith tradition. If you don't have a faith tradition, this is a great place to learn more about it. From scripture readings and prayers to journaling, Hallow makes it easy to practice mindfulness, build a deeper, more meaningful spiritual life, and choose peace. Remember, Paolo is giving you 90 days free. Imagine the peaceful habits you can establish in 90 days. Go to hallow.com slash Ramsey today and follow the simple prompts to start your free 90-day trial. That's hallow.com slash Ramsey.
Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. Jade Warshaw joins me. We're here for you, America, taking your calls about your money, your work, and your relationships. 888-825-5225 is the phone number. 888-825-5225. Got a great crowd today in the lobby. And I want to just mention, we got a lot of new people listening and watching all the time. And if you ever get to the Nashville area, we'd love to have you stop by. You can watch the show uh, in the lobby. We'd love to come out and say hi to you. Uh, We feed you free treats and free hot beverages. I mean, I don't know what else you could want. Uh, so we'd love to see you. Come by and see us. RamseySolutions.com to kind of check the show schedule and all that jazz there as well. All right, Talon is up in Little Rock, Arkansas. Talon, how can we help? Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Oh, I'm I'm better than I deserve. I've heard that a time or two. Uh, I like your draw on it. I like how you put a little extra a little extra length on that. Yeah. That was good. How can we help? I, I, oh, I'm I feel uh, overwhelmed and with just a tower of debt. Oh, tell me about the tower. Build it for Jade, please. Absolutely. Um, the total debt is thirty six thousand two hundred and seventy one dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, about twenty two thousand of that is in vehicles, and uh, the other fifteen is or almost 15 is between personal loan and credit cards okay. okay tell us about the cars how much do you owe on them and what are they worth well that's the downfall a few years ago um my wife and or me and my family were traveling working i was working on the road making a lot better money than i am now and just got in a bind and bought vehicles that i couldn't afford and I moved back, had to give up the vehicles, and so one of them, after they sold it, and however that whole scenario goes, I owe 4436 on one of them, and then the other one that we let them repo, we owe $17,684 on. Wow. We do not own either one of those vehicles anymore. Oh, wow. Is okay. that, what's the car worth that, that you owe 4400 on? The only one you have. I don't have that one you don't either have, anymore. He doesn't have, have either to, of them. I'm confused. What, what did I miss? You have zero cars? Well, I have I have two vehicles. Both of them are paid off. I paid cash for them whenever I got rid of those vehicles. Oh. And so I let both of those go back. Okay, and I got you. what I owe on them now. So okay. the two vehicles you have that are paid off, what are those both worth? Um, My wife... She drives a Camry. It's probably seven thousand, and then mine isn't maybe five hundred dollars. It has two hundred sixty thousand miles on it. Mm. Okay, okay. So, and then uh, tell me, Talon, what's your what's your income? Uh, I make forty seven thousand a year. Uh, my wife doesn't work right now. What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm a police officer. And uh, why is your wife not working? Uh, she was at home with the kids. My son just turned six and just started kindergarten, and mm-hmm. my daughter's in therapy. And so this just begun, and we're trying to figure out what, what she's going to do for work. Okay. So that's a big key point. How Your daughter that's in therapy, how old is she? He's four and a half. Four and a half. Okay. So with the other kid going to daycare, we do want to, or going to kindergarten, we do want to think about your wife working, even if it's part-time, something that she can do to bring in money. I'm going to let Ken tackle that career stuff because at the end of the day, I would like to see you guys get your income up. I mean, you're definitely below the national average and I'd like to at least get you up to the national average uh, in the 60s, okay? So that's the goal for now. Um, And until we can get extra margin in the equation, you don't have a lot of wiggle room, right? So you've got this uh, almost $37,000 of debt. Uh, Are you guys working on a budget? Uh, No, not enough to say we are. Okay. So that's thing one. The first thing I want you to do when you leave this phone call is I want you to go to everydollar.com and I want you to download a free version of Every Dollar. It's our budgeting app and it's going to you're going to do a zero based budget. So you're going to put in your income and you're going to subtract all the things that you spend money on those things that stay the same every month, like your, your mortgage, your car payment, you know, those things and the things that have the ability to change, like your groceries, your gas money. I want you to think of everything that you could possibly spend 
and it's going to do all the math for you. Okay. And it's going to tell you how much you have left and it'll either be a number in the green saying, Hey, not only can you pay all your bills, but you've also got a little bit of money left over, or it's going to be in the red. Cause you mentioned that you have some credit cards. Are you still using the credit cards? Nope. We've cut them up. Don't have any of those anymore. Um, nothing. Excellent. And is there any money saved anywhere? No. Okay. No, not at all. So the goal is we're going to get off the phone. We're downloading every dollar. We're, we're working through that budget, like I said. And then the first thing out of here is as quickly as you can, sell whatever you can. I want you to get $1,000 set aside. Because if you have $1,000 okay. set aside, Talon, hear me when I say you are going to be ahead of the majority of Americans. Because most Americans don't, it doesn't matter how much they make at work. Most Americans don't even have a thousand dollars and could not cover a thousand dollar emergency. So you're going to do that and you're going to feel, you're going to be able to hike up your pants and be like, all right, I'm doing something (laughs) good. I'm already ahead. And then we're going to start tackling this debt. Ken, hit them with the advice. Yeah. So before we get into ideas, I'm just, I want you to, to get some ownership into this talent. If I said, uh, Hey, you've got to come up with $20,000 in the next two to three months, um, you got to work it. You got to work for it. What are the first couple of ideas that would hit you if you had to come up with that kind of money? So working for the police department, we have what we call off-duty stuff, which is where businesses and stuff contract mm-hmm. work out to our police department, and we do that. Yeah. Um, I, I currently work normal 84 hours every two weeks. Um over the next 32 days, I'm working 29 days. We have off duty. It pays $50 an hour. Um, so I'm able to, here in the next month, I'm going to be able to make about an extra six grand. And that's all huge. that's going to go towards it. That's um, huge. What else could you so, do? What else could you do? Uh, it doesn't even have to be tied to your police work. I love the overtime as it relates to, uh, you know, parking cars at churches or, or, or directing traffic, not parking cars. But I love that. you got to get more, like, like I, I'd like you to get even more of that because you've got the ability, that's really good money at $50 an hour, and we could we could knock out some debt really, really fast. I know 36000 seems like a tower to you, and I love to use those words, but the more income you can generate, that tower gets short pretty quick. $36,000... Um, my friend, if you were to, and I know you can't do this every month, but if you were to make an extra six grand a month, that's six months. Mm -hmm. So you, you need to start to go, okay, what else can I do? You might be able to do some security, um, some overnight security, four nights in a, in a, uh, in a month on a weekend or so. I don't know. I would be doing anything and everything. Then forget just the police work or police related work. What other work can you do? You got some handyman skills. You have got to get really, really intense about this. And if you do it, and let's say you come up with an extra, we know you got the six, Mm -hmm. that's new income. If I'd like to see you get to 15 to 20 in new income over the next several months, additional income, uh, my friend, it is going to change your life. It's going to change your world. Yeah. I mean, unbelievable how you can walk through Mm -hmm. this. And your wife too. You know, you guys she needs can, to, yeah. she needs to get something going on too. She's watching the kids during the daytime, maybe yeah. during the afternoon she's doing this. Is there something she can do that's work from home, you know, that she's able to pick up nights or at nap time? You know what I'm saying? There's yeah. where there's a will, there's a way. Minimum. And the way the internet is these days. Yeah. She should be committing to 20 hours a week. And let's say she can make somewhere between, let's shoot for 15 bucks an hour. I'm just throwing some numbers out to begin for you guys to go, wait a second. Because there's something powerful about writing numbers down on paper and looking at them and going, well, if I do this and she does this, oh my gosh, we're out of debt in a year. Yep. That's right. And I think that's doable. Do you think that's too too bold? If you can. A year to year and a half. You know you can live on 47K if you were to double your income. By her getting a job and you doing extra hours, you're out in a year. I agree. It's doable. It's doable. We believe in you, Talon. Thank you so much for the call and thank for thank you for how you serve your local community. You guys got this. We believe in you. All right, don't move on the other side of the break. More Ramsey Show.
Hey guys, being free to make your own medical decisions is a big deal these days. Christian Healthcare Ministries gives members the freedom to choose the doctors and providers they want without the frustration of worrying about networks and with no waiting period to join. It's a membership-based nonprofit ministry where hundreds of thousands of Christians share funds to pay for and pray for each other's medical bills. For over 40 years, CHM has helped families living across all 50 states. So see if CHM could be right for your family. Check out more today at chministries.org slash budget. Ramsey Show continues from our Ramsey Solutions headquarters just south of Nashville. Thrilled to have you with us. 888-825-5225 is the toll-free number to jump in on the conversation as we talk about your life, your money, your work, and your relationships. I'm Ken Coleman. Jade Warshaw is with me this hour. We're thrilled that you are with us. Uh, Wow. You know, every time I see this, I never get over it. I hope I never get over it. I hope you punch me in the throat if I get over it. It's so cool to be able to talk to people from around the world. Oh, most definitely. Yeah, the world has changed. And, you know, it's flat when it comes to this kind of thing, the podcast and YouTube, people watching everywhere. It's not actually flat. (laughs) It's not actually flat. I'm it's like, flat metaphorically. Got you. See? Okay. Relax in there. They thought I was taking a position. Well, no. first you hit me with the toll-free number. Then you went to the world is flat theory. So it took me a minute I to... I get it. I know. I'm throwing a lot at you. <laughs> I, I'm metaphorically. I because Shane is on the line. Yeah. And and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to say this because I like to try. Harare, Zimbabwe. You got it. Did I get that right? Chris is... Uh, that's you got amazing. It. I'm taking the rest of the day off. Uh, all right. Shane, how can we help, sir? Well, uh, I'm getting ready to retire in about uh, four years, okay. and I'm kind of concerned. What are you concerned about? Well, um, we're debt-free. We've been debt-free for probably about uh, 15 years. Uh, we've got oh, probably close to – we're getting close to a million dollars in uh, our – TSPs, our four hundred one ks, traditionals, our Roth IRAs, our our other investments we have, mm-hmm. but we have no house. What are you doing in Harare, Zimbabwe? I work for the U.S. government. Okay, and so you have government housing. Yes. Okay. Okay. So you got about a million in your retirement. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So. Uh, in about four years, I'm going to have to find a place to live, and I'm I'm concerned whether uh, if if I take and pay cash for a house, mm-hmm. it takes and wipes out uh, you know half of uh, what we have. Okay. Um, How old are you? Uh, and then I'm I'm 61. Okay. Um. Yeah, having a, a paid for home is 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 part of what we teach. It's important to have that. Obviously you want something, you don't want to be renting going into retirement because it's such a variable thing with the money that you have. I really don't think that you need to rent. Uh, When you come back stateside, where do you plan on living? Like where, where's home going to be? Right now it's looking like Houston, Texas. Okay. And have you started looking at what it would cost to buy a modest home? It's you and your wife in Houston, Texas. Yes, uh, it's uh, around four hundred thousand dollars or so. Okay, so there's a couple of ways you could approach this. Um, well, let me let me let me. Can I ask a couple questions? Sure. I'm I'm, I'm curious. Uh, two questions, Shane. Number one, what will your government retirement pension or benefits? What will that look like? Um. Just for my uh, government um, uh, pension, it would be uh, three to four thousand dollars a month. Okay, and and then and that's until and then you got Social Security down the line, correct? Yes, and that could be another, uh, you know, 
I, I don't know. I'm, th- I'm thinking it's like $3,000 a month or something like that. Okay. But you re- why, why I interrupted you, Jade? Because I want, I, I want us to be all working from the same page. I mean, Shane, uh, let's just say it's three. And let's say it's three and three. That's six grand a month. Mm-hmm. Uh, my guess is you can live pretty comfortably on six grand a month. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Shane? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, I, I I would suspect so. I mean, do you know? Do you got budget no other now? Debt. Say again. Do you budget now? No, we don't. Unfortunately. All right. I'm setting Jade up here, but but I'm trying to also get a real picture of where you're at because you you presenting you present really scared, mm-hmm. and you got four more years of income. First of all. Then we've got, we know we've got some benefits coming your way. So you're not operating under, I'm going to retire. And all of a sudden I'm going to have half of my retirement. There's a whole lot more money coming in yeah. and you're still going to be 65. And if you had to work some, there's that option too. So and I, you I'm, still have four years before this all takes place. Yeah. So where my brain is going is how much, how much money can you pull together in the next four years to put towards a home? That's my first thought. Um, and then my next thought is, just because can we enter into retirement age doesn't mean that we stop working completely and we never do anything again. That's correct. So part of me is like, okay, what else can, what else would you like to do once you come back stateside? What's another way that you'd like to earn some money to put towards this? Cause I'll be honest, I don't love the idea of saying I'm going to pull out a, you know, 300,000 from my, you know, and, I agree. and get hit with that, ta- the taxes so I can pay cash for a home. So I think that you've got four years to save up. Yeah. And then I think that there's a, a home that you can buy that's, you know, not overly expensive. And I think you've got some more working years in you to put, to make headway on that. And I think in the meantime, you're still stacking up money because here's the thing, you've got a million dollars now in seven years, that's going to double, you know, as a lump sum. So you're going to be okay retirement wise. Let's dive into these numbers a little more, if you don't mind. Um, What's your salary right now? Uh, my wife and I together, we make probably about $180,000 a year. Come okay. on, somebody. All right. Shane, I know what's going on. There's you no have budget. A, you have no budget, so you have no idea w- what your money situation is, and you're also a guy who is scared to death because you're not sure what the future looks like. You haven't run any of these numbers. So 180 k combined income mm-hmm. in Zimbabwe, and you got government housing? Uh, can you live on 80,000 <laughs> on a $400,000 house? He can easily over the next four years, save up most of that just by scrimping. Shane, am I right? Now. Jay, tell me I'm wrong. Oh, I'm, you're not wrong. At I, least 50%. No I, excuse to not have 50% down payment. No excuse. Tori has a $200,000 mortgage. No am excuse. I making this stuff? No, oh. that feels right. What? I mean, Shane, you tell us, are we, are we tripping or do we? Okay. In Zimbabwe. What expenses do you have? <laughs> He's debt free. I know. That's what I'm saying. What are his other expenses? He has no housing. Hit it. Let us know, Shane. Food, fuel. <laughs> You're not spending. So $2. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm just I mean, kidding. bro, you got more money than you know what to do with. Are yeah. you a saver? I, and my wife calls me, uh, Mr. Cheap McCheap Pants. All right, that's Cheapy what's... McCheap Pants. Okay, okay. now we know what's now going, we know on. What's going so on. So you, how much money do you have in savings outside of the retirement? In cash, probably about uh, sixty or seventy thousand. Shane, come okay. on, that's Shane, great. You're fine. You got to stop worrying, man, and just put all this intense worrying yes. into intentionality of saving for that down payment. On you're going to buy a home in cash, and it's going to be completely yes. through your income. You're not going to have to touch your retirement at all. You guys are going to put away a hundred thousand dollars a year for the next. I'm four coming years. to Shane's house in Houston and having a party because Shane's going to have money buried in the backyard. Okay. Shane, I get it now. You're you're cheapy McCheap pants or whatever your wife calls you. I get it. You're scared. There's no reason to be scared. Do you give a lot too, Shane? Do you give a lot? Yeah, we probably give about uh, twenty thousand dollars a year to our church. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, we're fine. Tithe, uh, you know, ten percent. Yeah. 
Okay. Shannon, yeah, you're, you're gonna you're, be, you're gonna be just fine. Hey, let me re, let, let me go back and re ask the question and answer it for Shane. Yeah. Shane, can you live off of six thousand dollars a month? You should have been like, uh, yeah, I can live mm-hmm. off a of two. I can hear your wife in the background going, oh boy. No, don't tell ever. him he can live can't. off a of two because Cheapy McCheaperson or whatever she was calling it right. will emerge. She doesn't want oh, no. that. He's already there. He walks around <laughs> with a cape. Hey, Shane, you're gonna well, be I, fine, I, my I've friend. Talked- I've talked to her about eating beans and rice and rice and beans, and she just kind of gives me that look, you know? You don't yeah, need to don't eat need rice to and beans and beans and rice. <laughs> like, you need to be living it up in Zimbabwe. Look. <laughs> I mean, you can, that money goes a long way over uh, there. The storm is over now. You don't have to keep oh, doing that. I love when you sing just out of nowhere. <laughs> it's very exciting. I love that. Oh, Chief He's Chief fine. Person. He's fine. The dude is going to have over a million dollars. He can well easily over. live off of his benefits plus Social Security. Shane With a paid for a $400,000 house. Oh, Shane, go buy your, your wife something nice. She's been having her eye on and just relax. Take a couple deep breaths and get on a budget. You're going to feel better about it. Mm-hmm. This is the Ramsey. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jade. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Just go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, this is The Ramsey Show. It's where we help you win in life, specifically with your money, your work, and your relationships. I'm Ken Coleman. Jade Warshaw is with me this hour. 888-825-5225 is the toll-free number to jump in. 888-825-5225. We've had a great time so far. We're thrilled that you're with us. If you're brand new to the program, whether you're watching on YouTube, listening uh, on podcast, radio, Sirius XM, you are in a safe place. We want to help you win. Culture's told you you can't, and we believe otherwise. So yes. here we go. Let's go to Brooklyn in Spokane, Washington, uh, the the home of my of my esteemed co-host. That's right. Is that where right? I, that's where I was born. And how long Bone. were you in Spokane? Uh, till two years old. Two years. Okay, yep. very good. All right, Cheney, actually, Cheney. Oh, Cheney. Cheney. Okay, very good. Brooklyn, how can we help? Hi, um, I'm really happy I'm talking to you guys specifically because I think Jade is very inspirational with her story with her husband and Ken, you always just seem like so nice and friendly. So, well, I'm there glad you I go. You I'll today. take nice. You got inspiring. That's very good. That's great. Yeah, that's <laughs> Thank good. you, Brooklyn. Yes. Sorry, she, How she can we help? Um, so, I have two little girls. I have a seven year old and a one and a half year old. And I'm trying to do, um, I'm on baby step two. I did have to dip into my um, emergency fund for um, a tire on my car, but mm. I'm, I'm getting that back up with this paycheck I just got nice. um, on the 20th, which was yesterday. So we're yeah. good. Everything's okay. Great. Um, I don't feel like I'm doing gazelle intensity. I feel like I'm more of like a water buffalo <laughs> at this point. I, um, Been there before. I'm, doing my, <laughs> I'm just doing my best, but um, I guess to sum up my debt, I have 5000 in medical, uh, 5000 in student loans, which I did pay on. Um, I, I'm back on that. Very and then good. Uh, 9000 9, and I've been, yeah, I've been listening to you about the student loans, and so I made sure to check and see where I was at. Um, good. And then 9000 9, in credit cards. Mm-hmm. I have no car payment. Um, my dad is a big Dave Ramsey guy, and so he ended up getting me a car last year that's great what a good dad (laughs) shout out for a great dad that's awesome brooklyn that's amazing (laughs) yeah because he saw that like i sold i sold my car when i was about to go on maternity leave because i didn't want the car payment and i was going to buy something cheap and Mm -hmm. you know just um do my best but he bought me a new car and so way to go dad um yeah it's a great car all i had to do is replace a tire and and the windshield um but my insurance covered the windshield, so that was good and and everything. Um, but I'm working a lot, uh, well, like as much as I can, but I don't feel like it's enough. Oh, what are you doing? Um, I'm a barista. What do you make? A couple days a week. I, um, I make 
I only make twenty five thousand a year, mm-hmm. and my debt is at about twenty thousand a year. Sure. And so I guess I'm just a little intimidated um, by that number. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, let's just pause. Especially for... now that I'm figuring it out. There you go. So, so how old is your child? Um, I have a seven year old, so she just started second grade. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I have a one and a half year old. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I only have child care for her two days a week. Right. And unless her dad's off on the weekends, then right. And so that's just watch her and. Is that why your hours are limited? I'm trying to dig in here so we know yeah, what we're working with. That's my reason they're limited is because sure. of my one and a half year old. And, and where um, are you living? Um, I actually live in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and I drive 30 minutes to oh, Spokane to work. So I've been working in Spokane for about six years because the wages are double than what they are in Idaho. Yeah. Right. Good. Okay. So we have an income problem. Not just the yes. debt problem. And you're doing this on your own. And that's hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And can I just say, before we get to the money stuff, I want Jade to walk you through that. But I just want you to hear me say that you're enough. You're doing good enough mm-hmm. as a mom. You're doing okay, good thanks, enough. Because I just don't feel that way. I sometimes. could tell. And I want you to stop beating yeah. up on yourself. You're doing way better than you think you are. Yeah. You, you're feeding these kids. You're clothing yeah. these kids. You're taking care of these kids. Yeah. Y'all are eating. Yeah. The lights are on. Yes. Okay. Oh, they're always eating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know yeah. that's right. And that's the truth. So, hey, do, uh, so let's start there. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Um, one thing I want to say very quickly, and I want Jay to walk you through, because we, we've got to get more income in order mm-hmm. to get out of this debt. Mm-hmm. So, what we've got to figure out. I also do, um, I also do Instagram. To cart good um while good. my while my seven year old is in school good. um with my one one and a half year old but um what's I that can paying do you about two, two, oh, it's not great yeah so, i don't so, know why but i always kind of seem to get um some some stuff that ends up taking a lot longer mm-hmm. and then by the time i get two orders done it's time for my one and a half year old to take a nap exactly. yeah and so then we so, got to we got to go home or let's try to find something that's around. let's try to find something that's maybe online that you can do some work from home. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. Let's look into that because that's going to allow you yep. to utilize your evenings. Possibly once the kids go to bed, that's going to allow you to utilize the time when your one and a half year old is napping. I would look into some things yeah. like that. I know there's work from home, mm-hmm. customer service, call center type yes. jobs that you can get into that have decent hourly rates. That's right. So I would check into okay. that um, because for right now, just $500 is going to change your world. $500 a month is yeah. going to change yeah. your world. And I would also... The- well, and I also I also do clean an office on Sunday. So all together, I have three, three things I'm, I'm doing. Yes, but... Um, but. It's only spent so, out yeah. twenty five thousand a year, and that's that's poverty level stuff. Yeah. And so you're worth. It's so bad. I know, no, but you, but it's a, but listen, it's because I don't think that you've seen other opportunities and see what you can do. Mm-hmm. So a couple things um, at the end of the call, Christian. I want to make sure we get her. We have an article at Ramsey Solutions uh, that I wrote uh, and, uh, that's up there, and it's a it's it's about all these work from home jobs. You got to know what's out there. Number one, but number two, okay, you've also also got to look at changing this daycare situation. Yeah. Daycare is crushing you financially. And let me tell you what my wife and I did. I just want to give you an idea. And then I want mm-hmm. Jade to jump in. You've got to try to find an old, you know, I say old, you can find a grandmother who's retired, doesn't need to work, but wants to be active and loves kiddos, maybe through your church, some relationships. And let's see if we can cut our expenses on the daycare. Because if you've got a grandmother who would love to take care of kiddos and could do some meal prep, some light cleaning, and it could be way less money than you're paying in daycare. I just want to mention that really quick. You know, I, okay. and, and I know this is going to sound a little bit like, oh, but this is a job I have. You can make more doing something other than being a barista. 100%. You can make more cleaning houses. That's exactly right. And you can do it on your schedule. You know, you, you mentioned that you've yeah. got the, you know, it's the limited daycare. I just want to encourage you to use your talents what you're good at doing to earn more money at an hourly rate. And there's so much out there. I mean, literally you can chart, you know, get you three, two homes a day and charge 200 each. Super quick. I want to put out a call to our audience. If you're in the Spokane area, 
and you know somebody who's got who needs someone like Brooklyn who can come in and do the job, would you contact our show? Contact Ramsey Care. Yep. Let's see if we can help Brooklyn. Christian, make sure we get her information. Let's let's this audience can do something special. Let's help this single mom find a great job opportunity when she can make some money. We can do this. We can do this. This is the Ramsey Show. Back to the Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. Jade Warshaw is with me this hour. We're thrilled that you are here. 888-825-5225 is the number. 888-825-5225. Let's go to Brian, who is calling right here from our backyard, Nashville, Tennessee. Brian, how can we help? Hey, Ken and Jade. How are you? Great. How are you today? Doing fairly well. So, good situation. I lost my job a few weeks ago. Fortunately, I'm on a severance, so it's going to last a few months. Okay. Um, but um, I don't really have any debt except for my home, and I have a second home as well. So about 320000 left on my personal home. Um, my second home, which my in-laws live in, uh, I have about 170 left on that. Are they paying you um, a rent on that? They currently are not, no. Okay. So they're just um, in there I've, for free? I bought, it about, I bought it about 13 months ago. Okay. Um, yeah, they're living there rent-free right at this moment. That wasn't the original plan, but unfortunately, there's some some decisions that they made. That's where we're at at this point. So I, w- with my pr- prior salary, I would I was able to cover both mortgages, no problem. Okay. But uh, with the current situation of losing my job, um uh, I'll have about till Christmas until, and I've informed them of that. I have about till Christmas, and and something's going to have to change. What so. kind of work um, were you doing? Uh, I was in retail. I was an executive in retail. And so, how, what were you um, earning? Uh, my base salary was two hundred thousand. That's a big loss. Okay, and what about your wife? She's a school teacher. She makes 50. Okay, 50. So, okay, so you're feeling it right now. Um, I I have a couple of questions with the the home number two with the in-laws staying there. Can you explain to me why they're – what what happened to where they were supposed to pay rent and now they're, they're not? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, the market was really hot last year, and they're, they were in a situation with their health. They needed to get to a one-level place. They lived in a very large home, mm-hmm. um, and um, the I was able to – I had the money to make the down payment, and they were going to sell their home while the market was hot. And they – I'm trying to be quick here. They, they overpriced their home. Okay. And they never sold it. And it's still on the market. So, and, and well, it's, it's going back on the market, but in the last few months, it's not been on the market. They've been trying to sell it themselves. Mm-hmm. So, um, do they have any money? Are, do they have any money? Like, do, are they, they do they have they income? Have no, money. no, they have, have they, they're both retired. They're one has a part-time job. Basically, um, they're living paycheck to paycheck. Do they have debt? Oh, yes. They have over 100 grand in credit card debt. Okay. Which is so, the reason why I had, to, I had to purchase the house. Let's go. Well, you didn't have to, but uh, I know the situation. I've married a long time. So, uh, are you and your wife having an honest come to Jesus meeting with, uh, with the in laws about they need to get a real realtor? Uh, we've got some wonderful, wonderful people connected, uh, real estate professionals. If you go to our Ramsey Trusted section of RamseySolutions.com in their area, get a good realtor, mm-hmm. price that thing to sell. They don't get to be choosy right now. They need to move this house and move it now. Well, what are you paying? What are you paying a month for house number two? Uh, 1270 Ooh, well, yeah. Hold on. I want to... I, 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 I just want to know, has there been a come to Jesus meeting or is there going to be one? Oh, yeah. 
And, oh, and yeah. do they understand that? Are they going to do something about it? Um, they do. I think they're trying to come to terms with it. I'm giving them um, a, a little breathing room, but mm-hmm. we'll be back together. Soon. Okay. I just want to make sure okay, because good. to me, that's a big part of this deal. They got to take it's care huge. of them right now because mm-hmm. you, you got to take care of you. Yeah. Um, how much is the severance? Um, well, it's, it'll last till Christmas. It'll last so till Christmas. Basically, yeah. Okay. So Ken's going to help you with the career part of this. Um, the good thing is you don't have any other debt. The bad news is this second house, you got to get out of, you got to get out of this situation with the in-laws and you've got to set clear time limits on this. And this is one of those things. It, it's a deal. It's a bad deal gone bad. You know what I'm saying? And now you're kind of in that bed. You're having to lay in it. And it's going to require a lot of awkward conversations. It's going to require weird time limits where it's like, hey, especially be- even before you had your job, I would lost your job. I would have said this. But now that you've lost that job temporarily, it's like, all right, we've got to get out of this situation because this is going to bleed you if you don't. Ken? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to uh, the work thing. I don't think you need a lot of advice from me. I'll jump into that in a second. I'm going to tell you what I would do if I were you. Uh, the in-laws, would they're going to be out and out soon. If they need to live with you for a while for happy wife, happy life until they sell the house, that's fine. They need to be out of the second home. The reason is, is you have no debt except for the second home, if I remember correctly. Is that right? No, no, I, I still have three twenty left on my oh, personal. Oh, okay, home. and that's so, that's okay. That's okay, but my point is, you need renters, Jade. He needs renters in the second home until he decides, because now he's going to take a bath if he, he tries needs, to sell it. So he, I want renters in the second home. That's the first thing. In well, laws, that was going to be my that was going to be my question is because they made a comment as to they'll just go back to their previous house. Yeah, and, they need uh, to. It's like, well, that's that's your that's your choice. Fine, um, that's not your call. Um, no, it is but, your call. Yeah, no, no, but, no, no. But hold I, on. And it, I, I it can rent this home matter. for seventeen hundred. So yes, I could, rent I the home. Have, Four or five hundred dollars cash. Yeah, if they go back to their house, fine. My point is, it's not up for you. It's like they're adults; they need to get out of your house. But that's Where what I'm saying. That's go? why I'm saying it's his call. Is you have the ability? It's not. That's why I said it's awkward. You have the ability to say, guys. This is the situation. I can't yeah. keep having you rent for free. You've got a place that you own. Let's set it up to where you're not having yeah. to do the stairs or blah, blah. Let's set yeah. it up to where you can move back in because I've got to get money coming yeah. in. I lost my income and I've got to take care of my family. And that's a hard conversation. But you ha- I mean, I would not draw. If it's me, Jade, I would not draw this thing out until December because that's, no, that's a long time. You need a job. And you need to be hustling with everything you got. Don't rely on the severance. I would act like the severance doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. You've got a lot of experience and skill set uh, in your role. You don't have to stay in retail. One of the pieces of advice I give folks like you who've been in retail for a long time and at a high level, you feel as though you're not worthy, you're not valuable outside of retail. That's not true. The fact of the matter is you're an executive with executive experience and skill set. So you get after it. Mm-hmm. Uh Sorry for the confusion. When I say it's not your call, it's just the word I'm using. My point is where they go, that's that yeah. that's you you have one concern and one concern only. You got put into a situation or you allowed yourself to be put in a situation where you bought a second home for your in-laws. Mm-hmm. No. You need renters until you can get out of that home. Because as soon as you wouldn't take the capital gains tax, uh, if yeah. you can keep this thing afloat for 2 years, then sell the house, I would do it. Yep. But that is the same level of intensity is getting realtors, uh, renters as the same level of intensity of getting a job. Mm-hmm. And 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 mom and dad on the in law side, that's they're grown they're grown men and women. Yeah, they got to. Your go wife's got to support you there. And if they go back to their house or they go somewhere else, I don't care where they go. They just got to get out. And I think Jade's right. I wouldn't wait till December because that's, a that's putting a lot of pressure on you financially. Yeah, this this severance is supposed to be to help float your family. Yeah, you, not keep them not afloat. Not keep them afloat. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's so tough. Here's the deal. I'm going to give you a couple resources. I'm going to give you the get clear assessment. It'd be good for you to take cuz let me tell you what I know, Brian, that when someone is laid off or fired it is the same traumatic experience as losing a loved one. Mhm. And you've been successful at a high level for a long time, and you're rocked a little bit, and that's normal. I want you to take the assessment, use it as a self-awareness tool. I'm going to give you the book From Paycheck to Purpose. I'm going to give you the book The Proximity Principle. Everything about connecting, everything about forging a new path. 
based on awareness. Those three resources, my gift to you, please, please, please sit down with your wife, come up with a plan Mm -hmm. for the in-laws and you have got to move forward. Don't rely on the severance at all. Act like the severance is not there. That's the only way to recover from something like this. Still a good job market, certainly in Nashville. Go get hired, Brian, and kick the in-laws out. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. I'm Ken Coleman. Jade Warshaw joins me. The phone number for you to jump in as we talk about your life, specifically your money, your work, and your relationships. The number is 888-825-5225. Hey, we are growing. We're growing on all platforms, and that is because of you fine folks. And so if this show is helping you in any way, would you help us grow by simply sharing the show, subscribing uh, on the platform that you are engaged with, and and um, and, and giving us a positive Review That would all help us, you know, they say on the old algorithms. So there you go. We would appreciate that very much. Uh, real quick, before we get back to the phones, Jade, uh, our fearless leader, James Childs, uh, came in during the break. And a couple days ago, you and I were on the program together. Mm-hmm. And we shared some awesome testimonials from our audience uh, as to what side hustles they are using to get ahead in the baby steps, whether yes. it's that very first $1,000 in baby step one, or maybe it's the debt snowball, the smallest debt to the largest debts, or maybe it's uh, filling up that three to six month emergency fund. Maybe mm-hmm. it's college, whatever it is. Uh, and we said, you know what? Share some more. If you're listening to us, watching us, share some more of your story. So we've got a few here. So this is kind of fun. This is cool. Michael Finnegan uh, says, my side hustle is refing soccer. I've made about $7,500 so far from wow. refing. I could make over 10 k if I did it more, but I'm trying to balance spending time with my wife and three kids. <laughs> uh, I get that. That, by the way, is on top of his main job where he's working about 50 hours a week. Wow. Uh, but he has an hour drive each way. Oof. So uh, he's Michael's getting after it. Man, he's getting in shape, too, financially and physically oh, I'm doing soccer. You. I love that. Okay, I love this one at MW. Mirror. She says, Jade Warshaw, Ken Coleman, I am totally debt free, still working, and I have a side hustle. It pays $10 an hour, and I work one day a week. The side hustle allows me to play golf for free. I love that, which saves me 250 to 300 bucks a month. Basically, I get paid to play golf, yeah. living and giving because I follow the baby steps. Now, that right there, Ken, that's a, that's a mm-hmm. I like that. She's just like, hey, it's a trade. Yeah. I do this, and I get to play golf for free. Well, we have a theme going here. Dana Rudman says, I bartend, serve at two golf courses as my side hustle. I make 1500 to two grand a month Woo! extra, and I get free golf. I love it. We got a theme here, free golf. I got to figure out how to get free golf down at the old Legends. All you got to do is bartend, uh, apparently. Well, yeah, That's I great. So. At Morolo 1020, hey, guys, I made $250 for a three-day board of a dog yep. in my home. We talked about that. That's great. I said I was willing to board dogs. Yeah. Look, every I know people not, every day actually. who are looking for someone to watch their dog. She did it over Labor Day weekend. It was super easy and lots of fun. She said it's the best side hustle option for me, in my opinion. Wow. And let's shout out for all the stay-at-home mamas out there. This uh, lady says that she does DoorDash uh, while my kids are in school and make about $60 a day with a completely free schedule and no boss. Come on. Four hours, mostly driving, sitting around and waiting. So there you go. Wow. How about that? Look, and here's here's what I want to call out with the side hustle thing. Most of us have an hour here, an hour there. If you have time to watch Netflix, you have time to get a side hustle. Uh-oh. Let me just say it like that. Why'd you have to go and do that? I'm just saying. Making us all feel guilty for sitting there and watching some I'm Netflix. just saying do something during that time I have a buddy that I follow online and she does the surveys oh you yeah. know you can do the surveys yeah. and it's like there there is always something you can do to make money even if it's a little bit there's yeah. always something you can do with that extra mm-hmm. 30 minutes here and 40 That's what minutes I need there because I got an opinion to do the surveys yeah I'd yeah. see you to sit at home and do surveys mm-hmm. what's dad doing oh he's out there on the patio surveying stuff 
<laughs> oh man, that's great. Oh, uh, man. Real quick, uh, just for a little fun. What? Your favorite guilty pleasure on Netflix right now? Oh, right now I'm watching Suits. Oh, it's a great show. For the second time. I've watched it once. Oh. And double, now I'm watching it again. dipping. It's a good show. It's a good show. I don't know if it's worth What's a second. What's yours? Go- right now, Suits. You're watching it too? But for the first time. Oh, okay. uh, I got one more season. That's good. It is a fantastic yeah. show. My, really good writing. My husband's watching Quarterback. He likes that one. I've already seen that. Right. Yeah, well. Those kind of short documentaries, I pound those. Yeah. Did I, you watch the uh, American, what is it? Boom, 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 boom. Um, American Gladiators. Thank you. American no, Gladiators. No, I was always, I always, always irritated by those guys with the long hair and the extra muscles and the spandex. It little, was fascinating. It's a much for me. It was fascinating. Okay, good. Let's go to Will, who joins us now in Los Angeles, California. Will, how can we help? Hey, guys. How are you? Good. What's up? Yeah, so, uh, well, the reason I'm calling, uh, of course, I'm in, uh, I'm in quite some debt, uh, about thirty, about $33,000. It's mostly consumer debt. Um, and I was looking into a debt resolution program, but, you know, just – kind of get that gut feeling that might not be the best option so i just wanted to get like an opinion from of course like professionals Mm -hmm. i love gut feelings uh when you have a gut feeling it usually it usually you need usually need to to listen to it yeah um so let's go down that road how much what's your income uh so right now um I make somewhere between fifty-five and sixty thousand. Okay, so let's say sixty. Yeah, kind of, kind of varies, but yeah. And, and is it just you, or is there wife, kids, anything like that? I'm sorry. Uh, is it just you, or do you have a wife or kids? Oh uh, no, yeah, I'm married. My yeah, my, I have a wife and, and three daughters. Okay, and is that mm-hmm. income just yours, or does your wife work as well, or is that at all included? Uh, so that one is just mine. My wife does work as well, okay. um, but you know, she probably probably about half that maybe. Okay, so she's bringing in about thirty. So all in, you guys are have about yeah. ninety thousand a year. Yeah. Okay. Here's what I'm looking at, and this is just baseline. I'm like ninety thousand dollars a year, thirty three thousand dollars of debt. Now you live in Los Angeles. That's the only thing that I'm like. Okay, cost of living is yeah. pretty high. When you do your when you do your budget every month, or do you do a budget? We just started okay. uh, this month. So we just started doing a budget. Yeah, that's I guess part of the reason why I'm in the situation I'm in. Yeah. So as you've done your budget, when you like after all the expenses are paid, all the minimum payments are paid on the debt, what's left? Um not a whole lot, to be honest. Um maybe maybe a little less than a thousand. Okay. So you got let's say nine hundred bucks. That yeah. money is the money that you're going extra and above to pay off this debt. So it's $33,000 okay. of various debts. You're going to list them from smallest to largest. What's the smallest debt yeah. you have? So the smallest one is uh, $3,000. Okay. So yeah. if you were to pick up some extra work, your wife were to pick up some some extra work, as it is, you can pay that thing off in three months. But I want to go faster than that. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. do you see where I'm getting at here? Whatever mm-hmm. debt resolution company, they were going to charge something. And we don't want to give any more money away. This is debt we can pay off ourselves, right? Yeah. So that yeah. gut feeling, I think, I think you were right. I think you looked at that and said, why, you know, why am I going to pay somebody to settle something? I can call them up myself. Why am I going to pay somebody to lump it all together? I don't want to lump mm-hmm. it all together. I want to feel these small wins, right? It'll feel great when you knock yeah. out that three thousand exactly. dollar debt. Yeah. So that that's my advice. I'm listing these. I'm doing a debt snowball. You and your wife. Okay. Um, I'm guessing she's part-time because she's staying home with kids? Uh, yeah. She only works about maybe like four or five hours a day. Mm-hmm. Um, she, she's a nanny, so it's really just kind of uh, picking up the kid from, from his school, staying with him for a little bit until his parents come home. That's pretty much it. So it's just a couple hours a day. Okay. I love that. I would yeah. love for her to nanny for a family of three and do that same right. thing and make triple the amount. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. So these are the things, yeah. this is the way I want you thinking because with your okay. income, you guys can definitely get this done. Uh, the average, yeah. let's see, you're in, I don't want to say this because you're in Los Angeles, but the, the, the median income is around 67,000. So if I said to you, hey, live on 67,000 and put the rest towards debt, you should be able to do that. Now, and where you're at, it might be tougher. So for you, then that might be like, mm-hmm. hey, I've got to get, do these side hustles that Ken and I have been talking about. But either way, I'm not doing the debt resolution program. Yeah, I agree completely. Okay. 
Got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was I was discussing it with my wife. Um, I, I used to do security before. I'm in a different position right now. Mm-hmm. Um, that's always been in the back of my mind is maybe just kind of moonlighting. Heck yeah. And, Go do it again. You know, so, all right. Yeah. That's the, yeah, that's the, that's what, what came to mind yesterday when I spoke to the people from, from that program. I haven't yeah. signed up or anything, but. Good. Uh, sign up. Yeah. I figured that would be a, a better route to go. Yes, sign up today. I love it. You can it, hear the excitement in his voice. Yeah. He's ready. He knows that this is going to be the thing that moves the dial. Short-term sacrifice for a long-term game. It's always going to be worth it. She is Jade Warshaw. I'm Ken Coleman. This is The Ramsey Show. Welcome back to The Ramsey Show. So glad you are with us as we talk with you about your life. I'm Ken Coleman. Jade Warshaw is with me this hour. 888 is the phone number. Our scripture of the day comes from 1 Corinthians 9, verse 24. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. And our quote from Mrs. Spanks herself, Sarah Blakely. <laughs> you know, I've had the pleasure. Spanks. Of, yeah, I've interviewed her twice. She's uh, it's, it's, she's really, really interesting lady. I love that. Is she the one that goes on Shark Tank? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah I believe yeah. she's been on there, okay, but she's yeah. the founder of Spanx. Yes. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, her quote is, don't be intimidated by what you don't know. That can be your greatest strength and ensure that you do things differently from everyone else. Mm, I like that. That is good. I like that. Mic drop there. All right. To the Big Apple we go, New York City. Sarah is there. Sarah, how can we help? Hi. Thank you for taking my call. You bet. So my question is, um, should I move to a job that pays more but has worse benefits? Um, I have my current job has um, really good health insurance, good medical or good um, medical insurance has a it has a pension. Um, but it pays pretty low over the past year. The reason I moved to that job was because we ended up needing to do IVF, which the total for that came to about $130,000, which it covered in full. Wow. So, yeah. So, um, and I am pregnant now. Yay! Congratulations. <laughs> That's um, awesome, Sarah. My wife and I went through that and it did not work for us, but God had a different plan and it, it turned out great. Uh, I'm going to yeah. tell you something right now. Um, you should never make a, fine, uh, a professional decision on medical benefits alone. Mm-hmm. Not, not So it's not enough. So I've, I've got to ask, now that I've said that, the opportunity you have before you, how much of a pay bump is it? So it's I actually switched from this job because I moved. It was two reasons. I moved and I knew I was going to need IVF. So the job that I had before that I still work per diem for and have the opportunity to go back to made 110000 a year. Um, the job that I switched to initially, I made 69000 and I'm now up to 82000 Okay. So 110 versus 82 Yeah. Okay. And the benefits and I- aren't as good. Uh, well, I mean, what are they? When you compare them, you know, apples to apples. How mm-hmm. I mean, how bad is it in the in the in the new opportunity where you were before? It's so confusing. I'm so mm-hmm. confused, but I do understand what you're saying. Let's just call it the so new job, okay? The so, new job. So the the pay difference. It's a lower pay, but I get a three percent raise per year. I did not get a raise at the other place at all. Um, I have the good health insurance. I have a pension. Um, at the current job. Yeah. All right. What about the work itself? I mean, which one um, of you gives you a ladder to to more growth? You're saying you're not op. You don't have an option for an annual raise of at least three percent, which is very standard, by the way. You don't have yeah. that at the new job. At the new job, that's where I do get a raise. 
the new job, I have all these really good benefits with the lower pay. No, no, no. See, See, that's where we get confused. Uh, You've got an opportunity to go back to where you were, but I'm calling that the new job. Where you are, you're making 82K and you got great benefits and you get a 3% bump. I'm saying the job that will pay you more, 110. Are you saying there's no option for raises? Um, very little option for reasons. So what they do is they started me when I was there at 90,000 and they increase your pay based off, um, I'm a physician assistant. So it's based off how many patients I can see. Once you max that out, you kind of max out your salary. So occasionally they might throw something in. Maybe they would be nice into a cost of living raisin, but I never saw that they. Okay, and so you're telling me, based on the amount of patients you could see, you would be maxed at one ten. Yeah. And how different are the benefits? That's what I'm trying to get at. Is it that big of a deal? Is it going to cost you more? Um. So the benefits. I mean, the higher paying job that I came from had no IVF coverage. They covered 0%. Are you planning on doing IVF again? Yes. Mm. Yes. Okay. Well, then that Uh, changes everything. We could have started and finished there. If you believe (laughs) you're going to have to do IVF and you know your medical situation and your current company does full coverage of that, then I think that's a Mm no-brainer. Then what about after I'm done having kids or if, you know, IVF doesn't work again? You could always transition out whenever you're ready. Yeah, it's not like this is the only job opportunity you'll ever have. You're a physician's assistant. The sky's the limit for you. In fact, you should be, as a a PA, you should have the opportunity for continual growth. So the fact that you would be sort of capped Mm -hmm. uh, at this other place, to me, it's not the best option moving forward anyway. Yeah, I agree. So if, if IVF... Is something we think we have to lean on. I'd stay where you are. You're getting you're getting a three percent bump. You got good benefits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think if I'm you, based on what you've told me, I want I want I want Jade to weigh in. But I would stay where I am now, just for now, temporary. Yeah, I'd stay yeah. put, knowing what your goals are, because your goals right now are the IVF. It's going to be covered. You know that you have the potential to earn more money, and for me, that matters most. Like, no, I want to know that I have potential. Don't cut don't me off with capped. a glass ceiling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that for me, the, for me, the choice is simple. And like Ken said, and like I said, this is not forever. You no. can reevaluate in five years. You can reevaluate in two years. That's right. You know, um, this is for right now. And then after you have your next round of, you know, you have this baby, then you have your next round of IVF, have your next baby, then you can mm-hmm. talk about this again and decide yeah. what you want to do. Yeah. I like the fact that that massively important procedure, which is brought you a baby mm-hmm. uh, is covered that's, that's a great. huge benefit yeah, i think you have cool. to. i think it's a no-brainer you yeah. got to choose your heart here and uh y- your career growth is down the line mm-hmm. with with a just really quickly with a pension versus a 401k yeah. i mean i i can put money into a 403b which mm-hmm. i've been in because i believe i can take that with me yeah a pension, um if i'm there for five years i will get what i what was promised, um, which will be small or minimal, but if you stay for 30, 30 years, then it's a good pension. No, we're not, um, yeah. You're not making a 30 year decision here. No. You yeah. and I both know, Jade knows if IVF works and baby two is on the way, or if it doesn't work, either one of those scenarios, you're not staying where you are for a long term. Isn't that true? Well, I guess it's <laughs> <laughs> your heart's no. saying, your heart's saying, Ken, that's true. Your head's going, slow down. This Ken well, guy is pushing you a little I bit. I love a 403B option a little bit better anyway, because you have yeah. more control of what it's invested in. That's right. So okay. if, if, okay. if it really was boiled down to that, yeah. if somebody said, Jade, should I choose between a 401k or a pension? I'm going 401k all day. And don't stay at a job okay. just because of a 30-year pension. Yeah. Yeah. That's a recipe for accepting yeah. average and complacency. Yeah. As Old opposed to get out and get it, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. That's yeah, where Jade and I are coming from. We we love um, being able to set our own pace, set our goals, and mm-hmm. get after it. Don't, yeah. don't, let me tell you something. She's a former D1 athlete. Get out of her way. You try to tell her what she can't do and hold her back from progress, yeah. watch out. Dunking on folks. You're going to need more kidding. knee pads. 
I promise you that right now. And I'm the same way. You are the same way, Ken. And, and so that's why we're giving you this advice, Sarah. Uh, baby first, family first, yeah. and then dream next. Yes. But no mm-hmm. limits on the dream. No limits. That's right. The 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 whole idea of saving for retirement, you're going to be able to do that regardless, right? 15% yeah. into your 401k or 403b. And even if you did have a pension, that wouldn't count for the whole 15% anyway. You'd still be right. investing into yeah. some other vehicle. So there you have it. Yeah. Good on okay. you for really thinking this good through. Good questions. That's good. Very yes. good. You're smart. So happy for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to be a great... When's the baby Second. coming? Um, November 22nd, but probably much, much earlier. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, so. we're so excited for yes. you. What can we Thank give her you. as a baby yeah. gift, Jade? Let's see. If you, we do you have every dollar... Stuff. Um, I don't know. Let's get them set up. Let's get her set up with Financial Peace University and every dollar. That love is our it. gift to you, our baby gift, our Yay. baby shower gift. I love it. Way to go, Sarah. Oh, I love I love being involved in a baby shower that I don't have to actually show up to. Mm-hmm. That was the best of both. Yeah, ones. that was great. I put yeah, all the pressure those, on you. I just all went, those games. What should we give her? And you were like, Oh yeah, that was beautiful. I love it. All right, love fantastic it, stuff. Hey, love being with you, my friend. Jade Warshaw, Ken Coleman with you, America. James Childs, thanks for keeping it all on the tracks. God bless that man. And you, America, this is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Ken. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter.